Welcome to Caspec Watches, my name is Tim and today's topic is the Vintage Omega Constellation. Great topic for me because my first vintage watch was a Seamaster, Omega Seamaster from the 60s and then I was on the hook and I've bought several constellations and I've bought several uh, Genevs and I've made a video how to buy a vintage Omega Geneve this corner, I think in this corner. But today's topic is constellation the constellation and unfortunately I've sold my entire collection except this one 1962 gold cap yes and I think the constellation is one of the greatest vintage watches of all time because it's um, available there are plenty out there it's fairly robust you can it uh, you can wear it day to day which is not the case let's say with some some older Jezelu cultures for example, and and they are fairly affordable. They are relatively affordable. You don't have to spend a fortune, and so it's a great vintage watch for beginners, but also for experienced watch people. And you've read the title, How to Buy a Vintage Omega Constellation, but I will talk a little bit more about the background history. We can take a closer look at my piece here and then we speak about how to buy a piece for your collection and we talk about traps and movements and fakes and franken watches and everything and at the end of this video you will be able to pick up a decent timepiece, a decent constellation for your collection. By the way, sometimes I say vintage with a W and a viewer wrote me and told me not to do this and thank you very much for the advice. And frankly, I don't know why I'm doing this. And I think we have to, <laughs> to live with it. Introduced in 1952 as an automatic chronometer. And back then, the first models, they came out with bumper movements. And this is a little bit special. It's not for everybody. I personally, I'm always happy when I see a bumper and I wear a bumper because um, the name is the construction, basically. There is a hammer in it, a bumper and winds only in one direction of course and you can with every move of your arm you can feel this dum, 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 dum. it's very very funny sometimes you can even hear it and some people there are concerned about accuracy and no they are absolutely accurate if they are in good shape and efficiency and mm, yeah they, they have um, they come with a hand winding mechanism but my oldest bumper was from 1947 it wasn't a constellation and I've used, I think I've used the, the, the hand winding two times, three times, and then basically I, I shook the watch a little bit and, and I put it on the wrist and I was ready to go and it worked pretty, pretty good. Impressive, impressive um, movements. The problem are parts. Um, it's very hard for, for watchmakers to get in possession of parts for, for an old bumper movement. So if you want to buy a really old constellation with a bumper, then you have to make sure that everything is okay with that movement, okay? But then in 1955 they changed to the 500 series, the today legendary 500 series of movements. Um, beautiful, super accurate, robust movements and some collectors they see those movements as um, one of the best of all times. And they absolutely would deserve exhibition cases, but um, you will not find an original original constellation with an exhibition case. Maybe this would be a good idea. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the name, the historical name, constellation. And I thought over years that um, they've named the watch after a certain constellation of stars. Okay, because there is the observatory on the back of every constellation together with eight stars. And I thought, well, this is the explanation for the name, and I was wrong. In fact, it was named after this particular aircraft, and this is the constellation, a World War II aircraft made by Lockheed. Not to um, confuse with uh, later the super constellation, was a passenger airplane, very, very famous and in high regard today. Some aviation fans, they think this is the most beautiful airplane of all times but other topic we're talking about the older constellation military aircraft made by Lockheed 
But of course you can't find this observatory on the back with the, uh, with those eight stars. And but I've read I've read that the eight stars are symbols for records, records in timekeeping abilities made um, achieved by Omega in the 30s. Yes, this is the full explanation. And Omega they did very well with the constellation during the 60s and 70s with the with the, with the 500 series of movements until the quartz crisis. Yes, and the reaction of Omega was the Manhattan constellation. Omega Manhattan constellation was a quartz piece. And frankly, I have to say, I have to be the watch snob now. The history of the Omega constellation for me personally ended 1982. I have nothing in general against quartz, but um, the constellation was famous for, for accuracy achieved by a mechanical movement and not by quartz. I mean, it's damn easy to be accurate with a quartz movement. And so I, I don't see the point of this, this newer, this newer models. Plus I don't like the design. And now I will show you my constellation from 1962. First thing you may notice that this is not a museum's piece. Um, this is a heavily worn watch and the first owner was my grandfather and he received the watch from uh, a company he worked for and I think he did quite well but not perfect because it's not a golden watch. It's gold capped. This is certainly better than gold plated because you can find there a big layer of massive gold on top but it's not a golden watch. And the second owner was my father. And my father is a hardworking guy and he wore the piece every day during, I think, nearly 20 years. And when I received it as a gift, the condition was, it was uh, undescribable, undescribable. There wasn't scratches on, on, on the crystal. The crystal was, the plexi was broken, literally broken and open. And something, um, yeah, something scratched the dial pretty bad. You can see those scratches between 10 and 11 and the hands were rusty and the loom was broken it was terrible and the crown was only the little knob the original crown was pure gold and you can't see this crown is, is metal it's an original crown omega crown but my watchmaker he overhauled the whole watch and he had decided to buy this this um, steel crown and frankly i think this was the wrong decision because this watch was supposed to be next to a golden watch, right? And if you see this, this metal crown there, then this will ruin the, the illusion. You can see the gold cap very good and, and the case made out of steel. Other side, look at the lux, please. Heavily worn piece from the 60s. And if this thing was gold plated, then you could see metal on the lux. Then you could see a, a hardly damaged gold plating. But this gold there is intact. Yeah, very good, very good technique. And here, of course, the famous observatory with those eight stars, heavily worn as well. You can see this heavily worn. Note the lux again, please. Here you can see the gold cap. Very well done. The movement, and it's the movement 551, the version without a date. And the movement is fully serviced, so it's absolutely accurate, pleasure to wear. And the dimensions are rather small. The case diameter is 34 millimeters, so very small compared to modern timepieces. But I like that. When I wear a vintage watch, then I don't know. I don't compare them to modern timepieces. This wouldn't make any sense. And so f for me, this the smaller size is perfectly fine. I love this on the wrist together with a decent suit. And now let's buy one. Let's buy a Constellation. Um, first, you have to make a decision because there are 100 constellations out there i don't know maybe 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 even more so you have to pick your model of choice and then you have to open it yes you have to open it or you have to see images of the movement and the inside the inside of the case back because you need two numbers and the first is the reference number and you find the reference number in uh, on the inside of the case back and with the reference number you can use google images and you can identify franken watches very important because the main problem with vintage constellations is not the fake there are some fakes out there but it's not overly important here because there are so few but there are there are tons of of franken watches out there and you have to be able to identify them and you can do this with a with a reference number, as I said, 
and with the second number and this is the serial number you find the serial number on the movement and can call it movement number if you if you want same thing and it's very easy to 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 um, figure out the year of manufacture of your watch with the serial number there are charts available in, uh, on the internet you can find a link in the description here you, you can type in your 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 serial number and then it will spit out the year of manufacture and now you can double check with the reference and the year of manufacture you can with those two numbers you can double check your watch you can uh, determine um, if uh, let's say the hands fit the year or the year fit the movement or and so on and so on you get the idea right and now let's talk about the movement then condition first movement um if you are in the lucky position that you can choose then stick to the 500 series as i said in the 70s they used the thousand series and those are not bad movements but as i said if you can choose then choose the 500 series and if you are super lucky and you can choose a particular piece in the 500 series then i would go for the six uh, excuse me 565 because most of collectors of vintage Omega constellations, they regard the, the 565 the highest. And so I think this is a good way to go. And now let's talk about condition. Um, as I said in the intro, there are plenty of constellations out there in good condition, in immaculate condition. And so for me, um, there's no excuse for bad condition. You shouldn't accept bad condition um, in case of a constellation. It makes no sense at all. Um, especially if you see those watches with uh, patina on the dial, which is water damage with its rust and it can affect the movement. You can't be sure if the watch inside isn't damaged. So huge risk. And so um, this, in my opinion, is important for all vintage watches. If you, vintage, vintage, vintage watches. If you see a vintage watch with um, patina, then this is very, very risky to buy and I would stay away from that. Okay, now I can show you my models of choice, my constellations of choice, and of course they represent my personal taste, okay? But they also represent the personal taste of a very famous designer, and this is Gerald Genta, and famous in the watch world. And he created some of the most iconic watch designs in the history of horology, and for example, the, the Royal Oak. The first one is the reference 168005. The first three numbers, they are an entire line, the 168, okay? And the last numbers indicate the certain model because you can find here variations. You can find the um, 168 in various metals with different dial colors and with different uh, numerals and markers and so on. And here you have the classic Gerald Genta constellation. Please note the characteristic form of the lux together with the characteristic hand and especially the crown. This is the original constellation crown and now you can see why I'm not so happy with my new old stock crown. And this constellation was one of mine. It's the reference 168009 and it's called the C shape because of the characteristic form of the case. Yeah, wonderful pieces. Some people find them a little bit 70s the design a little bit 70s i don't know if this is so accurate for me this represents more the 60s but we can we can um, argue about that the advantage of this case is that they are easy to polish because you have you have those curves very reachable for machinery and so it's very easy to to restore the cases of this old old constellations and this is a C shape in 18 karat gold. Oh, I was deeply in love with that watch, but then I was a little bit greedy and I sold it to a lawyer. And funny fact here, it was stolen back then, I think 20 or 30 years ago, because the serial number was scratched out of this of this watch. And of course, I, I indicated this and the lawyer was fine with that. And I guess he found that funny in a way. And please note the dial. This is called a linen dial because it shows this, uh, this crazy crazy glittering on it. Is this word glittering? <laughs> I don't know. And here you have another C shape with the date and the day. And I'm this is a great watch, but I'm not so sure if I want the, the day on my constellation because it reminds me of a Zyko 5. And I own a Zyko 5, I have no problem with the model, but it's a different thing, okay? It's a different thing. And this characteristic day window reminds me very hard of another class, another another genre of watches. Okay, little goodie, this is an original clasp from the 60s. 
And in case of class, we can't find fakes out there. They're cheap and they're ugly and they are pretty easy to spot if you can compare them to an original one. And so take this <laughs> image as the original and sorry, you're on the safe side. That's all about the constellation. If you want more information, then please check the link in the description There you can find a well-written and very informative blog about the model. Plenty of information. And if you find my videos helpful, please subscribe. It's a great help for me. It's very encouraging. And by the way, the next analyzing video is in the making, so stay tuned. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and maybe until next time.